Hi everyone, it's Tim here, and welcome to my second vlog. I'm very sorry that it's taken so long. It's been such a busy start to the year. Um, there's so many events to organise, and concerts, and bookings, and all that sort of thing, that it's taken up a lot of my time. And I've also been recording the album, and uh, between the two of them, I've, I've spent a lot of time in the studio and office, a lot more time than I normally do. So I haven't quite got cabin fever, but we're getting there. Anyway, the first thing I wanted to talk about was the album, and perhaps you can help me. I intended to write 12 songs for the album, and um, well, I've written 11. The reason why I've only written 11 is because uh, two of the songs are quite long, so I didn't think that 12 songs was warranted. I've also written and recorded the arrangements for nine out of the 11 songs. So I'm really pleased about that, very pleased with how that went. Um, so I've only got two more to, uh, to focus on, and then after that, I've got to fly the vocals down. Um, so I'm hoping to get that done by the 15th of February. Then after that, we storyboard two videos for two songs, and then a promo video. So watch out for them later on. But in the meantime, I've got two choices for a title. The first one is Albion. The album kind of like lends itself towards a, a British kind of feel. And Albion was the original name for this island. It was actually named after the last living giant, according to legends, uh, who was called Albion. And it represents the early period of this country's development. So I mean, I'm really fascinated about and the history of this country and how that ties in with the people that fought and fought and died for this country, the men, women uh, and all the victims. So that's what the album's all about. So I, I, I was thinking about Albion. I was also thinking about um, Bowman. Now Bowman uh, is dedicated to the English longbowmen in times gone by who was probably one of the most deadliest soldiers in the world. They could actually put an arrow through a sheet of steel, um, you know, 700 uh, paces. So they were pretty lethal. And how they parallel with the modern British army, because after all, the British army now is a descendant from that period. And the album lends itself to that. So perhaps if you'd like to contact me through Facebook and um, you know maybe you can help me decide which title to go for, Albion or Bowman. One of the strongest songs actually on the album is called Bowman. So it will be a title track, so it might be a good way to go. Anyway, so if you'd like to help me with that, I'd be much appreciated. Sorry, I'll just kick the camera. No, no. Something else I wanted to talk about, which is another aspect of my career, are ticket shows. Or, to be more precise, premium shows. Now, premium shows are designed for you to get dressed in that suit, the ladies can get dressed in their evening dresses, and go to a quality venue where you can sit down in a comfortable and relaxed environment and watch a show. They're normally ticket-based because Obviously, the overheads are higher. Um, but this is an extremely popular show. And I've got a number of dates I thought I'd announce, just in case you might be interested in coming along. So the first date is on the 10th of February at the Orchard Inn, West Huntsville, North Somerset. Now, the doors open at 7 o'clock. We sit down for the mill at 730 and the show starts at nine. I'll be singing with a very, very talented young singer. She's actually a female singer called Breeze. Some of you may know her. And uh, this comes with a three course meal. And I've got to tell you now that the, the, the tickets have already sold out. In fact, we released a further 20 tickets. And uh, if we were to sell any more, then we'd be up to capacity and 
you know, our principles of quality over quantity would be broken. So I don't want to do that. So uh, that was already sold out. The reason why I brought it up is because, you know, these shows are so popular that if you don't buy the tickets early, then you won't get in. So uh, if you do decide to come along to one of our shows, then book early. Having said that, there's a number of other premium shows that we put on. The next one, in fact, is on the 14th of February. That's at the Brasserie in Chapter Mallet, Somerset. Of course, the 14th is Valentine's night. And I've been invited to perform in the restaurant uh, for the, the team down there. I have to tell you, they're very, very passionate about their food and their events. In fact, they put on a five course taster menu plus a glass of sparkling white wine. So, um, and anyone that wants to know what a taster menu is, it's kind of like slightly smaller um, portions, but they're designed to stimulate the taste buds. So, uh, yeah, so it's gonna be a good night. Um, doors open at seven, door, uh, the, we sit down for the middle at 7.30, but the show starts at quarter past eight because it's on a Wednesday night. And I didn't really want to um, go on for too late because obviously many of you have to get up for work. So the tickets are at £30 a ticket, which is a little bit higher, but you do get a glass of sparkling white wine. And uh, everyone knows that, um, you know, that can cost you between five fifty and £6 in any venue. So, or any, any place that sells that kind of thing. So it's good value for money, really. So I hope to see you there. Okay, that's on the 14th. The door's open, like I say, at 7 o'clock. So. Anyway, the next one is on the 24th of February. Um, and this is at the Greedy Goose, Long Ashton, Bristol. Uh, I'm working with a couple of friends of mine there. I'll talk about them in a minute. But the door's open at 7.30. You sit down for the meal at 8 o'clock. And the show starts at 9. Now that's 19.95 per ticket and that comes with a carvery mill. Now I should be working with uh, two of my friends, Andy, who runs AD Promotions. Um, he's been putting on shows for three decades, um, and he's also a prolific charity fundraiser. And the other friend is Mr. Paul Salvage, who I regard as one of the best all-round entertainers on the circuit. Paul got to the finals of Star Junior Rise back in 1992, and uh, he had the second highest votes in the history of that program. Unfortunately, the lady that won it had the highest. But having said that, Paul's had an extremely successful career and has toured nationally and internationally and is well worth coming to see. I've also invited Breeze again, very talented young female singer, as I say. And uh, so really you've got three premium uh, performers and a carvery mill for 19.95, and that's not bad. That is not bad. So uh, yeah, so that's the 24th. What else have we got? Um, on the 14th of April, I should be performing at the St. Peter's St. Paul's Church in Wincanton. Now this is a, more like a concert. And the doors open at seven, um, we sit down for the concert at 7.30. There's no meal, but I know that the church are organising um, the refreshments in the break, so there will be refreshments there. Afterwards, we're going up to the um, Dolphin Hotel, which is run by a very good friend of mine and an avid supporter of live music, a guy called Pete. And we're going to have an after party there. So you can join us for that as well. The tickets are at £12, okay, so it's a bit cheaper, but like I say, there's no mail. Anyway, what else have we got? We've got, oh, by the way, Breeze will be there. Breeze will be performing with me, and we'll be performing some duets together. I really enjoy singing with Breeze. She's a lovely girl, real sweetheart, with a fantastic voice. One of the best voices I've heard for a long, long, long time. So there you go. What else have we got? So that's the 14th. Um, oh yeah, there's just one more uh, date I'd like to bring up. 
and that is June the 9th. I'm performing at the Strode Theatre Street, Somerset. Um, the producer of that show is a very good friend of mine called Mervyn Colnett. Now, Mervyn runs a promotions company called MC Promotions. And he works very closely with the team at Strode Theatre. Um, and he puts on a lot of really, really good shows there. He's a real fan of 60s music as well, so that plays a big part. But uh, I always enjoy working with Mervyn. We have a good laugh. Now, that particular night, he's asked me to, to um, put on a, a Roy Orbison tribute. I should be performing with the Glastonbury Brass Band, along with a standard electric band. Breeze is going to be there as well, and uh, she'll be performing. So, yeah, yeah, it's going to be a cracker. So that's just some of the, the premium shows that we've got on offer at the moment. I'm going to put them all on my web website, eBay. So I'm going to pull them on the on the website. Um, uh, I'll do that within the next two or three days of you actually getting this video. Oh, well, it's nearly dark now, and uh, so I better push on. But I wanted to talk about one more subject um, before I go, and that's what it takes to be an independent artist. It's clear now there are two industries. Um, there's the record company industry and there's the independent industry. Now the record company industry, um, with all its glitz and its glamour and its television contracts and so on and so forth, um, obviously is the industry that gets streamed through your television. But the independent industry, which I belong to, is a far bigger industry. And it's growing very, very quickly. And the reason why it's grown so quickly, in my opinion, is because modern technology is allowing us to be far more self-sufficient. And what I mean by that is that back in the 80s, um, you had to go to a professional recording studio. Um, and uh, you're talking even then £250 an hour. And that was back when £250 an hour was a lot of money. I was earning £90 a week at the time, you know. So, yeah, so you've got, you've got the independent industry and, um, you know, and everything that goes with that. Um, now, those particular um, recording studios back in the 80s, I mean, used to take up a huge building. But now you can fit that kind of um, concept in a small room. All right, the results aren't quite as good as the old analog studios. Um, but nevertheless, uh, creatively, you can, you can record some amazing stuff now. The independent industry is made up of micro-businesses or businesses, I should say, independent businesses, and like mine. And um, I can't tell you how happy I am that this industry is growing the way it's growing. You know, bear in mind, I believe that the record company industry is actually in big decline. The reason why I'm so happy is because I was the first singer-songwriter to be awarded a grant by the Prince's Trust, or more accurately, the Prince's Youth Business Trust. And um, our argument was based on the fact that you could treat your music career as a um, small business. And I'm looking around now, nearly 30 years later, and that's what I see. I see small businesses around me. Um, the secret is to be as self-sufficient as you can. And I'm talking to any um, artists that are um, actually thinking of starting out. I mean, I'm in a lucky position where I don't have to um, contract any work out. I can do everything myself. I don't have to pay for anything really now. Um, I can, from start to finish, create a product, you know, music product and sell it on. So, yeah, that's all I wanted to talk about, really, was that... Um, the independent industry is, is becoming absolutely fascinating. Look at the marketing. You've got mediums like uh, Facebook, um, which is a great marketing tool. You've got YouTube. Um, it's just incredible, you know. And for the first time, if you play your cards right, maybe I'll tell you how to do it um, later on in the year. Um, but if you play your cards right, you can earn a lot of money in the independent industry. Uh, I'm not one of them. But uh, I know there's a lot of 
um, artisan independent industry is making a lot of money, you know, more than the signed artists. So it's incredible. Anyway, that's it then. I will speak to you on uh, vlog number three very soon. I'm going to expand all this. I'm going to bring in um, fellow musicians, singers, songwriters, interviews. Um, I'm going to become a little bit more creative in how I um, approach these vlogs. I just think they're a lot of fun. And it's great to be able to talk to you out there about what I'm doing. So, I'll see you very soon.